ATF scalping course. This is Craig here along with Eusebio and we're really glad to have you in the room today. Eusebio has been working long and hard to develop the scalping method for Maxers, uh, including many months of live testing, seeking to ensure that we have an effective and a reliable method available to us. Some of you are very new to this idea. Others have been waiting and hoping for a long time, and I think a couple of you, <laughs> I think a couple of you may have been praying for this too. <laughs> and finally, the day has arrived. So, without further ado, we'll ask Eusebio to pull back the curtain and tell us about Max scalping. So, we extend our very sincere thanks to you, Eusebio for all of your efforts in preparing this for us, and it's a pleasure to present this very good audience to you today. The mic is yours. Thank you very much, Craig, for this nice introduction. Hello, everyone. I'm very happy to see you present today in this presentation, and I also warmly thank you all the, the participants who will watch this presentation through the recorded video. So, um, so Whenever we present a new subject within the max, I like to use a famous quote written more than 300 years ago by a German philosopher, Goethe. Uh, many of you uh, know that name, at least the name. And the quote is, it is an English translation, of course, uh, it is not enough to have knowledge, one must also apply it. It is not enough to have wishes, one must also accomplish. And in fact, for many of you, this quote seems very similar, uh, very uh, uh, actual, um, in fact. And in reality, there is a modern version of this quote, of this concept, which is called the law of attraction. If you have studied the law of attraction, it is exactly what this quote explains. Indeed, if you want to progress in your life, you need to acquire the corresponding knowledge, but acquiring the knowledge is not enough, you have to apply that knowledge. And you can make any dreams you want to progress in your life, you will have to act to make steps toward that objective to achieve that objective. It is not enough to make a prayer to the universe and wait for the universe to answer your, your dream. You have to act to, and so to be responsible, uh, in fact, to achieve your dreams. And this is the concept we always use within the max whenever it is necessary to achieve some result or some objective, we act in order to improve the process we are using in our trading activity. Generally, it is understood that a trading a scalping system corresponds to a trading style which focuses on small price movements um, in order to have uh, an exposure in the market as short as possible. Uh, this is the, the idea of uh, many scalpers, but they try to be in the market just a small time period and to catch a small profit so for each trade. This requires, of course, to increase the number of winners uh, to make some decent profit and decrease um, uh, the, the size of the wins. So, generally speaking, an approach in scalping consists in increasing the number of trades hoping to increase the number of winning trades, but with a price which consists in decreasing the reward to risk ratio of each profitable trade. And this will create some problems. So, because of the main assumptions or beliefs, because we can prove nothing, of course, uh, when I say assumption or belief, behind such kind of uh, trading approach are the following. Less time exposure limits the risk. It is believed that if we stay in the market as short as possible, we limit the risk we have for each one, because we never know what may happen. It's impossible to define exactly what may happen on the next second, on the next minute, on the next hour. We may have a black swan at any moment. And so by limiting the time exposure, we limit the risk for the trade we are exposed or we are taking. It is also believed that smaller movements are easier to catch than larger movements or trends. So, I have a personal opinion about that, but 
It is not the point. Here, the point is to present what are the assumptions and the beliefs. And another belief is the smaller movements are way more frequent than larger movements. And this is true. When we observe a chart, what of the time frame, we can see that small movements are way more frequent than uh, larger movements. But, of course, with these assumptions, it is not a guarantee that we can be profitable. Because to be profitable with a scalping system, this requires a lot of other important uh, conditions. So, but before explaining these conditions and the risk associated, I have to define also the different type of, of scalping. Uh, perhaps many traders don't know, but there are indeed at least three classical scalping styles. And most of you know uh, two of them. But the first one is what I call a market maker-like style. And this uh, scalping style consists in trying to capitalize on the spread of the instrument we want to trade by using simultaneous orders on the ask and on the bid price. Uh, but this is an extremely difficult approach to, to trade because we are competing, if we try to use that, that kind of style, we are competing with the market makers. And it's not possible in every market. It, it's, for example, possible in the stock market. In the Forex market, it's way more difficult because the spread are uh, highly variable and sometimes they are extremely tiny. And we have some difficulties in the trade execution with a lot of latency, with volatility, with slippages sometimes. So this kind of approach uh, for scalping in the Forex is almost impossible. It's possible in some markets, but it requires some very strict conditions. Then a very classical well-known scalping style is uh, consists in taking a tiny profit but with a big trade size, a big trade size. But this kind of uh, style requires, of course, to trade instruments which are enough liquid, whatever the market we want to trade, because scalping, a scalping technique can be applied in any market, in the stock market, in the uh, futures market, in the bonds market, in the, the currency market, and so on. And then there is another traditional uh, scalping uh, technique, scalping style, you should say style instead of technique, which consists in taking a trade whenever a classical setup appears, whatever the setup uh, is. For example, it can be a very classical uh, cross of two moving averages. And then to close the trade on a first exit setup or when some profit, for example, one R or a one to one rule to risk ratio is made is achieved. And so these are, in fact, the three possible classical scalping styles, with one which is extremely difficult to uh, use, and two which are more feasible but which have also some important constraints. This is what I'm going to explain now. So what are the problems we encounter when we try to apply these scalping styles? Because we need to act very, very quickly when we scalp the market, uh, we need to master uh, what is called the art of efficient order execution. In fact, any delay, any latency in the trade execution or any delay due to the trader or any error made by the trader can wipe out a potential profit should the trade be handled correctly because the price can reverse very quickly. And if the trader is not fast enough to open and or to close the trade, the potential profit may disappear very quickly. And so this requires, for example, a fast execution system like a direct access uh, uh, system, uh, DAT, uh, and possibly a level two quotes. So these two approaches, these two techniques or tools may help. So, and for example, in the front, we begin to see brokers proposing a level two a screen uh, in order to help the trader to handle their trade, their entry, and their exit levels. <clears throat> a very important point we have to take into account when we scale the market is not only the frequency of the trade, but also the cost associated with the trade, because these costs can greatly impact the profitability of the trading system. And what are 
the costs. We have two types of costs, for example, the slippages we may uh, face, but also the spread. And uh, a large, and, and the commission, never forget the commission, because some brokers have also a system of commissions. This depends on their uh, business model. So some brokers may have very tiny spread, but uh, as a counterparty, they will have commissions and vice versa. And some brokers will have uh, spread and commission. So the frequency of the trade, the spread, the commissions, the slippages will have a big, big impact in the profitability. And so sometimes all these codes may completely wipe out the profit you can make with a scalping system. And so in such a case, the choice of the broker is essential. So it is not only essential to have a good broker, but also a broker proposing an approach with a special technology, for example, with low spread and low uh, latency and low uh, commissions. And then the trading itself, uh, the trading approach, in fact. The trader, in order to be successful with any scalping style, must, first of all, perfectly identify the direction of the movement he wants to trade, for example, the trend and its momentum, or, because this is possible with a scalping approach, a trend reversal. And in order to achieve profitability, so it is essential to correctly identify the direction he wants to trade, but also the momentum of that direction. So, and so this means that a complete mastering of technical analysis is required. You need to know a lot of techniques of technical analysis in order to achieve success in scalping. Um, in the 80s, I remember, there has been a lot of um, studies which has been made around technical analysis, because technical analysis was uh, highly favored by many, many traders, even professional traders at that moment, and many conclusions, many studies have shown that in order to be profitable with only technical analysis, a uh, winning rate of 70% or more was necessary. And this has not changed today. And it is even worse with scalp uh, scalping techniques. So the winning rate must be very, very high. For some specific reason, I will explain uh, just in a moment. So the volume of activity is also important. When a trader wants to trade a specific instrument, this instrument must be uh, very liquid in order to have fast entries and fast exits. Because, of course, if we miss an entry, it's not a problem. We have missed an opportunity. But once we have made an entry, once we are in a trade, we must be guaranteed that the exit can be made very, very quickly. And so the uh, high liquidity is a necessity when scalping. So, and so because the scalping technique requires some very... Uh, specific techniques, a high discipline, a strict discipline is also necessary. It is even more important than in a trend-following system. In a trend-following system, if you miss the entry at the beginning of the trend and you take the next entry setup, it's not a big problem. But uh, And then you will have your exit uh, setup. If you miss one exit setup, it may not be catastrophic. But in scalping, if you miss a small detail, this can become a losing trade. And a losing trade, if you accumulate losing trade after losing trade, it can become a catastrophic situation. So, and so what some traders are doing artificially is, in order to increase the winning rate, they use a larger stop loss, and sometimes insane stop loss, in a mechanical way. Uh, and this is the big problem, in fact, with scalping trading system. So the losses of the losing trade are way more important than the profits of the winning trade. We, I, I have seen scalping system with a 90 or even 95% winning rate and miserably failing because the 5% or the 10% of the losing trade were producing big, big losses. It's not a problem to have, in fact, a larger stop loss and a small profit for each winning trade, and so a larger loss for uh, losing trade, provided the total profit are still larger than the total losses. 
and this requires some very specific attention in trading. And so this is why with all these problems, and this list is not exhaustive, of course, we can imagine other uh, uh, conditions, other situations. As a consequence, it's not a surprise that many, many trading, uh, scalping trading, are uh, failing. So, And fortunately, <clears throat> there is another way to scalp. And this way to scalp is to take into consideration in the trading uh, process uh, to take some conditions uh, or some knowledge on how the market is really working. We know that 80% of the forex, for example, but this is true also for all the other uh, financial markets, are driven, are um, uh, manipulated by the big boys or by the institutions, uh, in fact. And so that alternative way to consider scalping consists in knowing when and <laughs> I'm waiting for the max scalping EA for $79. Oh, John, you have a strange dream. So, <laughs> so <coughs> that other way, that alternative way to consider scalping so it consists in, first of all, knowing when and in which direction the big boys are possibly managing their position, whether or not they manipulate the market. It's also important to know when some volumes become critical, because not all the volumes in the market are made equal. There are some levels of the volume which are a big indication that something will happen soon. And when you know that, it helps in scalping. It is also very important to identify critical price levels where liquidities are available, where, for example, the market can reverse. And so when you know these uh, specific price levels, you have an edge in the market and you can consider a trade exploiting that knowledge. And also, but you already know that uh, by any other trading system, and especially for the max members uh, with the max trading, the different max trading approaches, it is also important to know when to trade, but also when not to trade. Just to take an example, it, it is not necessary to trade when we are facing an important news release. If we are not able to predict what the news release could be, or maybe, taking a trade before a news release, it's insane. It's better to wait for the news and then react to the news. And so when we use, and the list I have mentioned is not necessarily exhaustive again, but when we use correctly these informations, then the scalper trader will naturally, naturally, and this is important, naturally achieve a very high success rate without the necessary, the necessary to use insane stop loss. Just to give you an example, with the scalping system I will I present I'm presenting today, the winning rate is around 95%. The losing rate is around 2.5%. The profits for each trade uh, is between 3 and 5 pips. Remember, a scalping approach consists in taking a tiny profit whenever it is possible. So between 3 and 5 pips generally, sometimes it may be more, uh, sometimes it may be a little less, but on average between 3 and 5 pips. And the stop loss may be between 15 to 20 pips. Sometimes it may be less, sometimes it may be larger, depending on the volatility of the instrument we want to, uh, we want to trade. And if you make a quick calculation, even if you take the less favorable numbers, if you make a quick calculation of the expectancy, you will see that the expectancy is positive and very positive. And so with such results, you can consider that this way of scalping the market is highly uh, profitable. And I will give some more detailed uh, results later in this presentation. So. <clears throat> and so what is or what are the aim of the max ETF scalping course? First of all is to have a simple trading method because the rules are not difficult at all. We have uh, some rules in this uh, course, in this uh, scalping approach on MT4, but there is also a version which, which will be presented perhaps later on um, NinjaTrader. 
exploiting safe movement, so movement we understand, uh, using critical price levels, using specific levels of volumes, using technical bias, a technical bias, I will show what the technical bias is in a moment, as an, uh, as an option using a global context bias. I, um, I uh, explain here that the global context bias is uh, an option because it is a service we have, uh, we are providing for several weeks, now several months, and when we take that global context into account, the winning rate of this scalping approach uh, further increase almost to 100 persons. That's really amazing how uh, the understanding of a global context bias helps to increase further naturally the winning rate of uh, any trading system. And I will illustrate with some examples so, um, in a moment. And so at this point, we can say that a trader now has the, the choice between two approaches in scalping, either a quantitative approach uh, where the trader uh, prefer the quantity to the quality, but accepting the problems and the difficulties such a quantitative approach present. So with all the uncertainties and all the problems uh, linked to uh, too large losses compared to the small profits, or this new approach which I will qualify as a qualitative approach with less trade, but with safer trades, but with also some constraint, because applying these element, safe movement, critical price level, specific volumes, technical bias, possibly uh, uh, the global context bias, and with, of course, uh, as always within the market, sound risk and money management, so requires some constraints. And it's not as simple as it may seem usually in a scalping trading approach. So, my personal choice would be for the second approach. I always prefer the quality to the quantity. So, and so how are the sessions organized with this new approach in scalping? So, the course uh, is organized with two sessions. And during these two sessions, I will present the concept, the rules, in a very progressive way, with a lot of illustrations on chart, uh, of course. And as usual in all the max courses, there will be homework assigned at the end of each session. Now, what is the content of the first session? In the first session, I will explain the different uh, criteria individually. And this criteria consists in the following. How to recognize, first of all, the current context of a pair. There is a simple way, indeed, to identify the context of a pair and in which direction we have most of the time to consider taking a trade on that specific pair. How to recognize some level of retail traders' activity, because this is also important. So. Uh, the big boys will begin to appear sometimes in terms of, for example, stop-loss hunting when the retail traders' activity will achieve some level. And so it is important also to recognize when the big boys may possibly manipulate the market and may possibly manipulate the pair we intend to trade. It is also important to understand which pair we can scalp. Not all the pairs are favorable for a scalping approach. There are specific pairs we must use, we must consider. Then I will also teach how to recognize the critical price levels with high level of liquidity, or possibly with high level of liquidity. We are never sure 100% of the case because we don't have all the information in the market. I will teach also how to recognize when the volumes sustain the move and it will not be what many traders already know about the volumes. It is important to recognize, also, and I will tip that also, how to recognize extreme price areas. Where are the levels, uh, so where are uh, areas in the price where the big boss begin to act, in fact, begin to accumulate or begin to distribute. 
I will explain how to use the max ETF slow bias as a criteria whenever it will apply for this scalping approach. And I will explain also uh, how we can optionally use the max bias advantage, so the bias related to the global context, in order to increase, to further increase the winning rate of this scalping technique. So this is the content of the first session, and then in the session number two, we will define the trade setups. So we'll define the entry and the exit setups. So, and the maturity of scalping will in fact consider four types of setup called setup levels. These setups are not uh, setups as we uh, usually understand with the max courses, which represent several uh, types of price pattern, but each setup will correspond to a set of conditions. All the criteria I have explained previously represent a condition, and depending on which conditions are fulfilled simultaneously, we will have a different level for the setup. And so, the level one will correspond to a minimum, a minimum set of fulfilled conditions. This means the riskier type of trade, and for this level of trade, of setup, we will consider, for example, a small position. For a small position size, a small trade size. The, the level two will correspond to a larger set of conditions being fulfilled. And this will mean would make that trade, that setup safer. And so for this trade, this kind of trade, we will consider, for example, a smaller or medium position size. And then with the level three, we will have a larger subset of conditions being fulfilled. We will consider a larger position size. And the level four will consider to a situation when all the conditions will be fulfilled. And this is the safest and perfect setup which has almost a 100% or uh, if not a 100% winning rate, but because all the conditions must be fulfilled, we can first of all consider a very large position, but this kind of setup, and you can understand that, uh, I, I think, are less frequent. So the more frequent setups, the most frequent setups are the most risky setup, the less uh, frequent uh, setup are the safest uh, setup, but when I say the, um, the level one represent a riskier setup, this is this still represent a very high winning rate, so more than uh, eighty percent winning rate or eighty five ninety percent winning rate. So, so each level so defined which criteria must be fulfilled and so which trade size to use. And so in the session two, I will also especially explain which pair we can use to scalp that way, and what kind of brokers we have to consider. Not all the brokers can be used in order to scalp the market. We need to have brokers proposing very fast execution and small uh, commission and very, very, very small uh, spread. So the cost of trading must be minimal. And of course, at the end of the session one, at the end of the session two, there will be a homework assignment. So. Now, with the context, the, the content of these two sessions, so I can so explain what you can expect with the max ETF scalping. Because, of course, uh, many of you uh, could ask the question here, yeah, but uh, what kind of result may I expect with this kind of trading system? So, the statistics I'm going to present here correspond to real uh, statistics made with real trades on a period of eight and a half months. And the period uh, runs from April 11th last year, so 2019, to yesterday, uh, or for last Friday, so January 24th, 2020, with no trade or almost no trade in December, for the reason you know December is a low level activity month. And so this represents, so if we accept December, eight and a half months of trading. During that period, so we have made 546 trades, which still represent a nice number of trades. This represents approximately 60 trades per month, or on average, three trades per day, on eight pairs. Uh, I will explain in the course what are the eight pairs. So this means that sometimes we'll have less trades. There will be days with no trades, but there will be days with many trades up to 10 trades, for example. I think the maximum has been 
ten trades. But um, it's um, there is a possibility for one specific day with a very high level of activity to see more than ten trades. But on average, three trades up to now. 546 trades uh, represent a very, very significant number of trades. And among these 546 trades, we get, we got 505 winning trades. This represents 92.5% winning trades. Only 11 losing trades. This represents 2% of losing trades and 30 break-even trades. Because we have also 30 break-even uh, break trades. This represents 5.5% break-even trades. Now, when we consider uh, a losing trade, we always use, of course, an emergency stop loss for each trade, but it's extremely rare that the price hits that, extreme, that um, emergency stop loss. Most of the time, the loss of a losing trade is way smaller than the maximum uh, loss, and the maximum loss is uh, around five times a possible win, uh, in fact. So the ratio win-loss is still very, very favorable with such uh, winning trade. If we exclude the break-even trade, because in the statistics, many traders have a tendency to exclude the break-even trade. Personally, I like to include that, but many traders like to um, uh, exclude the break-even trades. And so if we exclude these 30 uh, break-even trades, we are left with, uh, in fact, 560 trades, 16. Among these 516 trades, there was still, of course, 505 winning trades and 11 losing trades. But the percentages are different now. Uh, we have 97.9% .9 of winning trades and only 2.1% uh, losing trades. So this represents, in both cases, uh, a very high winning rate and a very low, very low, low uh, losing trade. And this is important because um, when we consider catching a very small profit in the market, we need to have necessarily a high winning rate um, in the process in order to achieve a nice expectancy for that scalping approach. And so these were uh, live trades. Let me give you just some uh, examples of these trades, just to illustrate some of them. By the way, in terms of uh, financial performance, depending on the risk you will associate to your trade, you can count to make a profit of around 5% per month using a very a tiny risk per trade, up to 10 to 15 percent per month if you use a larger risk, for example, a 1 or 2 percent risk, but this will be explained in the course uh, too. So you can modulate, in fact, your um, financial performance depending on the risk you can uh, associate to each trade. So let me just show you some uh, past and recent uh, examples. So, <clears throat> Uh, Barbara is asking what time of the day. I will explain that, uh, Barbara, at the end of uh, the day. But uh, all these trades have been taken during the European session and uh, some of them during the second part of the US session. But theoretically, this scalping approach can be used at any moment of the day. At any moment of the day, even during the ASEAN session, uh, in fact, provided we trade specific pairs, the pairs I will uh, uh, indicate during the course, okay, which are pairs with, in fact, the, the condition is to have very, very high liquid pairs. So, so some past example. So here, <clears throat> this is an example of a pair. The pair is not important in itself. You see how the price is evolving. You see some indicators on the, on the chart, for example, you see these uh, uh, blue uh, up a row. These blue up a row indicate when possibly the big boys will begin to accumulate or distribute if we have uh, a down red a row. We have also here this uh, magenta line or purple line which is a specific price level. And so we have here a special indicator based on the, some aspect of the volume uh, with some trade line we will have uh, to draw uh, uh, on this indicator. There are other indicators I have not shown here, on, uh, which are not shown here on this chart. And this is an example of a trade, so the entry has been made right on this point. 
to the upside, so it was a long trade, and the price went immediately, so in the direction of the trade, and the trade has been closed with a profit with the, the, uh, the, the um, intended profit. So another example was this one, again, uh, a long trade, the price was going uh, downward, but nonetheless, in this down movement, the big boys were beginning to accumulate to the to the upside, and all the, some of the conditions were fulfilled to take right at this point here, uh, right at this point here, right here, a long trade, and immediately after that, the price moved the number of pips, the necessary number of pips to take the profit we intended to take. Some other past examples are the following, and this one, uh, this, this time I will show uh, you some uh, spreadsheet which are not included in the, uh, in the PowerPoint here. So this was a level one trade on the Aussie US dollar. So the level one trade correspond to the smallest set of conditions being fulfilled. So uh, here the price was going upward, but the big boys were beginning to distribute. And all the conditions were fulfilled to take a short trade. And the short trade has been taken on this point, where you see this white line. And immediately after, the price moved to the downside and made, made the objective. So immediately, uh, in just a few, uh, in less than five minutes, the time frame was the five minute time frame. So in less than five minutes, the price made the objective. So another example is this one. This one is an example of a level two trade with more conditions being fulfilled. It was a long trade in this case. And so uh, here the entry has been made here, and you can see that immediately the price went upward, making the expected profit. So, so this was on the euro US dollar with a level two trade. An example of a level three trade was uh, this one. Uh, on the US dollar, no, the, the, yeah, the US dollar Swiss, for example, here, uh, the big ones were beginning to accumulate, and so almost all the concessions were fulfilled, not all because it was a level three trade. The entry has been made here and at this point, and so immediately the price went upward and the profit has been made very, very quickly. It took only two bars in the five minute time frame to achieve the profit. Now, the example I have shown here in the past examples, so are simple trades. Sometimes, and this will be taught also uh, in, the, uh, in the course, sometimes there will be a possibility to make some scaling. In fact, what may happen sometimes is an entry will be made, and the price, instead of going in the direction of the trade, the price will go uh, in the opposite direction of the trade. And with specific conditions, it will be possible to scale in while the price is doing counter, uh, counter movement, in fact, in order to average down the, the entry level of the trade, of the, uh, we call it a campaign, and then uh, almost always at some point the price reverses and make the profit we expect, or we are able to close the, the, the trade at break even. And from time to time, we will have a loss, uh, of course. So these were examples of past trade made uh, last year. I'm going to show you the three trade which has been made this week, uh, last week, in fact, not this week, uh, but last week. So these were recent examples, three examples. Uh, the first example was on uh, January 17, so on the Kiwi US dollar, uh, on the five minute uh, time frame. We can see here some of the conditions. So we see, for example, uh, when the big boys begin to accumulate, we see a specific price level, a critical price level. We see here um, uh, another volume indicator. And we see here, you recognize the slow bias. We don't use the, the fast bias, uh, we use the slow bias. And so we had uh, many conditions which were fulfilled, and so we had two trades, in fact, uh, in this, uh, on this chart, one trade here with an entry, you can see here the entry almost right at the bottom of this movement, it was a pullback, in fact, um, an entry at the bottom of the pullback with an immediate uh, exit, so a few pips later, and a few bars later, another entry possibility, and again, a profit made with, within a few bars, so, so two trades, so on this pair that day.
another uh, example on the 21st of January, so uh, also uh, last uh, week, so on the pound, uh, the pound US dollar, this time it was a short trade, with these red arrow we begin to see that the big boys begin to distribute. Some of the conditions were fulfilled to have a specific level uh, subset, uh, a condition being fulfilled, allowing a short trade and a few bars later the profit has been uh, achieved. So, so the trade again closed profitably. In fact, all the trades last week have been closed profitably, all the trades. So, and the last example was on the US dollar card, Friday, precisely Friday. The big boys were beginning to accumulate. Uh, several conditions were fulfilled, allowing an entry almost at the bottom of this uh, uh, small uh, low. And then the price take a little more time to move in the right direction, but it moved finally after a few bars enough to close the trade with the expected profit. So. <clears throat> uh, accumulate means in getting ready to go long and distribute means going short. Yes, Robert, that's perfectly correct. Yes, indeed. And I will explain that concept. I will explain that concept during the course. Okay. So level 1 and level 2, level 3, level 4 represent which set of conditions are fulfilled and they represent also the level of safety of the trade. As I have explained previously, if I come back just a few slide earlier, so here, so we have, we define four levels of setups. The level one represent the, the, the riskier uh, setup, the level four represent the safest setup, but all the setup are, uh, have a high winning rate, of course, but we go from the riskier uh, setup to the safest setup depending on the number of conditions being fulfilled. The conditions being all the conditions I have described here, except the max bias advantage, which take into account the global context. Okay? Oh, there is a problem with the sound. Can you still hear me? You still hear me correctly? Oh, okay, John can hear. Okay, fine. So, <clears throat> but some of these indicators will have alert, and when an alert appears, then you can check your chart. For example, um, if I'm right, but you, you can confirm that, uh, Gregor, but I'm sure the, the idea we display here in the upper left corner of the screen has an alert when the conditions are fulfilled. This means that we have at that moment to check all the other conditions to have a trade. It may be immediately, it may be sometimes later. And I think that these arrows, blue and red arrow, also have a sound alert. And by the way, because this has been a question, None of our indicators repaint, so no indicator repaint. This slow bias, sometimes you may have the impression it repaint, but it doesn't repaint. What is happening is the following. This slow bias represents what is happening in a higher time frame. And so as long as the higher time frame does not confirm a change in the direction, the color of the indicator can change. So it can change to, from green to red, and before the higher time frame changes from upward to downward, the color red can come back to green. This is not repenting. This is what is happening in the higher time frame. When we trade in the, in the smaller time frame, a higher time frame indicator always have an adaptation as long as the corresponding higher time frame candle does not close. But no indicator we are using here repaints. We never use repainting indicators, so we're using the max, whatever the, 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 the max uh, system we are using. The recommended pairs are included in the course, uh, indeed, indeed. Uh, I joined the webinar late, uh, you, uh, do the arrow appears on the chart and do the arrow. So they appear on the chart, but they do not repaint. As I have said, uh, Adam, uh, no indicator we are using repaint. Okay, I hope I have answered all the questions. We have answered all the questions. If we have missed uh, some question, feel free to repost it because uh, the, the feed in the question area uh, goes very fast sometimes. I see no uh, further uh, questions. So uh, I thank you very much for your participation. So and hope to see you in the course in a few days on that. So in the meantime, take care. Bye everyone.